Hey everyone, welcome back to Bike Fit Advisor. So I wanted to do this video because it's come up a few times, especially lately. Certainly it's no secret that uh, with the pandemic that sourcing products, especially bikes and other bike parts, has been especially difficult. But I've seen a number of clients sort of in the panic to try and find a bike, any bike, make some rash decisions and uh, act a little bit too quickly and get a bike that ends up really not working for them at all. And in a few cases, spending significant am amounts of money and the bike clearly doesn't fit. It's, it's clearly not the right size. So I wanted to review something I have done uh, videos in the past about, but it definitely bears repeating. Uh, just a couple of things about how to do some basic geometry searches of your own, where if you just look at a couple of different measurements, then it can it really can save you a lot of grief. So I want to go over those measurements. I like to use four main measurements, and they really are actually in two pairs. And what they are is their effective top tube length and head tube length. Those two sort of are are kind of done together often and then stack and reach. And they basically overlap. So they're, you know, so stack and head tube length go together. They're kind of two sides of the same coin. And then effective top tube and uh, reach go together. And, and very similarly, they, they tell this, a similar story, but in slightly different way. So let's get into why that's important. Okay, so let's real quick just review what they are. Uh, this is a bike that's kind of half put together, but again, head tube length is really simply the head tube, the actual head tube here from the top bearing here to the bottom, that length. Um, and the effective top tube is the, the horizontal distance between the center of the top of the head tube and the horizontal line intersecting sort of the center of the seat tube or seat post. Um, and then stack and reach. Stack and reach are a little bit different. They are from, they measured the distance horizontally and vertically between two points from the center of the bottom bracket and then that same center top of the head tube. Now, the vertical distance between those two points is the stack. And then the horizontal distance between those two uh, measurements is the reach. Okay. So any geometry chart is gonna have those four measurements and many, many others. So if your current bike, let's say it's even an average fit for you. And you, you pretty, you're pretty sure though that, you know what, maybe I need a little bit more bar height. It's just a tiny bit low on the front end. We can still start with the geometry of that bike, just those four measurements that we talked about, and use that to sort of guide us with the next purchase. So in that instance, let's say we do have a bike that, you know, the reach feels not too bad. Maybe the bars are a little bit low. Well, we might want to err on the side of having uh, a, a bike that has a little longer head tube or a little bit higher stack to it. Especially if you your current bar position is set with a lot of spacers, as you see on this bike, and let's say this stem had a lot more rise to it. And that bar height still felt a little bit low, like you felt like you might be more comfortable and be able to come up just a little bit further, then we definitely want to search for a bike that has a taller head tube and a little bit or a little bit more stack to it hopefully so we didn't have to do that higher rise stem again. So let's dive just a little bit deeper into the measurements so you can kind of see how we can use them to leverage uh, some information and some data in our favor. These days, especially with a lot of the variability in bike geometry, due to the, just the sheer number of bikes out there, it, they, knowing these measurements can be really helpful. Let's take the frame stack and the head tube length and the fact that those two, again, they kind of go together. They tell us generally how high we can get our bar position. The taller the head tube and the taller the stack, generally the higher bar position is allowed. The effective top tube and the reach measurement, so the effective top tube and then the reach measurement, they tell us generally how long the bike is, how long the cockpit, how far away our bars are going to be. And these days it can be tough. If we know that, let's say for instance, um, we're kind of looking at, we have a traditional road bike that has caliper brakes like this one does, uh, but we're trying to compare it to a, a much newer road bike that has disc brakes and maybe it has room for even 32 or 35 millimeter tires in it. That bike is going to have a little longer fork more than likely and that longer fork may translate into more stack 
especially if the head tube length is the same. So it can kind of verify for us that yes, indeed, that even though these bikes are different geometries because they accept sort of different wheel sizes, that the new bike is still going to satisfy our bar height requirements. Another way I've, that we use, say for instance, head tube length and the stack measurement is, let's say we have, we're looking at two bikes to purchase, we're, we're trying to decide between the two, and they have relatively the same stack height. Head tube length, doesn't matter, it, it, they're roughly similar, but the stack heights are almost identical. But we do know by looking at the rest of the geometry that the bottom bracket height on one of the bikes is lower. Now, going back to our original example, let's say we're looking for more bar height. Again, we want to sit up just a little bit more. If one of those bikes has a lower bottom bracket, then since we're going to have the same seat height on both of them, obviously we're going to, we're going to normalize that between our bikes, and given the same crank length, that lower bottom bracket bike that one is going, to, is going to seem, it's going to have a relatively higher bar position because what we're doing is we're now sitting lower in the bike frame, which makes the bike front end relatively higher for us. So let's look at a way that we can use the effective top tube and then the reach measurement together. And one that comes up quite often is, um, I've had a number of clients that they're on a, they're on a particularly sized bike and they, they feel like they're kind of always falling forward a little bit. They're not balanced quite right. They'd like to get their hips back just a little bit uh, while they're pedaling so they have their feet in front of them just a little bit more. They're kind of too much on top of their pedals, let's say. And let's say we're looking at two bikes and they, the bikes have the same effective top two. That's, that measurement is almost identical. Let's say it's the same or a millimeter or two different. But one of the bikes has a shorter reach measurement. Um, and let's say it's even significantly shorter. Let's say it's like eight millimeters shorter than the other one. Well, that tells us since the reach measurement starts at the same point as the effective top tube, but it stops at the bottom bracket. Okay, it's the horizontal measurement to that bottom bracket. If the bike with the shorter reach measurement here it's going to have more of its more of the length of the bike, more of the cockpit behind the bottom bracket. Because since we know that the effective top tube is the same, this total distance here, if this distance is shorter on one of the bikes, then that particular bike has more length, more reach behind the bottom bracket. And so it's going to put you, as I say, more in the back seat on the bike. You are going to have your hips a little further back behind you than the other one. Now there's a a number of different ways uh, by looking at other aspects of the geometry that you can leverage these measurements. But these are really four very easy ones that if you just know those, and especially if you're starting from a good place where you have a bike that you know is it's a known quantity, you know it, it fits well, or you kind of know some of its foibles, like eh, it's a tiny bit long for you, or maybe it's too short then you can kind of leverage that information and say, oh, okay, I'm looking for a bike if it's too short, I'm looking for a bike with a little longer reach or a little bit longer effective top tube. But starting with those four measurements and sort of sketching out what you're looking for, you can be more confident in your choice of a new bike that way. So that's all for this one. Thanks everybody. Uh, put any comments, questions down below. I will try and answer those and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks.